All right, next, 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 let's take a look at um, ionic compounds. In this case, our metal can be of a variable charge. So what we're talking about here is our transition metals and not our exception. So zinc doesn't count um, and silver doesn't count, but the rest of the transition metals are gonna follow this naming convention. Cross out those two because those won't follow this naming convention. And so this is probably the weirdest naming convention, but uh, here's how it goes. We go with the name of the cation, which is of course our metal. So that's pretty simple. And then what we have here in parentheses is the charge of the atom or of the metal. So right, is the metal plus one, plus two, plus three in Roman numerals. And then after that, we go with the base name of the anion and add our I. So if you're not sure what Roman numerals look like, um, it looks like an I, that means one. Two I's means two, really plus one, plus two in case we're talking about metals. Three um, I's is plus three. Um, four then is I V. Five is just V. Six is V I. And then seven is V I I. Um, we won't really go beyond that. And transition metals, for the most part, don't go beyond that. So let's take a look at an example. So we have CrO. And so remember that chromium is a transition metal. So chromium is right there on the periodic table. So it can have all kinds of charges. Um, oxygen over here, on the other hand, will have a charge of two minus. And you notice that the uh, compound is overall neutral. So that chromium has to cancel out that negative two charge. So it's got to be a positive two charge. And so the name that we what would call this is chromium two oxide, right? Where this two means that the chromium has a plus two charge. Another example, we have Cr2. O3. Again, we know that the oxygen has a negative two charge, and there are three of them. And on the other side, we have chromium. There's two of them. They have a charge of X. That's what we want to figure out, right? This has to sum up to be equal to zero because we have no charge on this molecule. Solve for X, you'll get plus three. So this is chromium three oxide. Notice that the three does not refer to the number of oxygens or the number of anions or anything. The three references the charge of the metal. Let's take a look at a reverse example. If we have lead IV, which is four chloride. So remember that the IV means the charge on the metal. So lead is PB and its charge is going to be four plus. If we think about chloride, each chloride is a Cl minus. And so in order to balance these out, we need four chlorines for every one lead. So lead four chloride would be PbCl4. Again, the four is the charge of the lead, not how many chlorines we have. That's probably the biggest misconception. Again, the thing in Roman numerals is the charge of your transition metals. Of course, there's only one way to get this, and that's through some practice.